think we need to take the opportunity to have a look at some of your notebooks sure. as well. Maybe you can talk us through, sure. through those as sure. well. Happy to. Here is the, this is my original first page, but it shows the, the, two, uh, the two groups and some of the people. And they have a policy, not mass collecting expedition. The role, they gave the role of OTS. And then we had the first lecture from Rodriguez, who is a orchid specialist, who gave a, a general talk on the geography and the people of Costa Rica. And he said that uh, Osa was named for an explorer named Osa, which I didn't know. I forgot. I, I, what year is this? Six, 1966, July. So then we used to have, uh, the OTS courses used to have what they call an organism lab where we would go collect, everybody would collect things that seemed interesting and bring them and put them on a table in the little field lab. Uh, people would label them, write down on cards what they knew about them. And I'm seeing here some things that I didn't know much about at the time and I later worked on after I rediscovered them and forgot I'd seen them here. There's a Jansen's bullhorn acacia. And um, there's some of the uh, Brazzavola nodosa, the lady of the night orchid. There's some Heliconia latispatha. Calathea lutea. Can you go back just one second? Which? Okay, yeah, that one's good. This one was. Okay. This was Calathea. Okay. Basiloxylon, which is restricted to the Pacific side of Costa Rica. Cyclanthaceae. Most people would think that's a palm, but it's not. And here's a group I worked on. This is uh, Garania leviana, and I didn't know I was going to work on that years later. I forgot we even had that in the uh, in the session there. And then we had some herpetologists. They were bringing in all these poor frogs and putting them in on the table. There's a blast frog. There's some of the poison dart frogs. There's a leptopus. There was our first encounter with orchid bees. Actually, I had seen orchid bees in Mexico in 1965, but I didn't know what the heck they were. We found some nests. One thing I learned in these courses was to get up really early, and that was due to Dan Jansen, who had learned that he had to get up early to work on uh, nocturnal or early morning bees. And that served me well later when I was doing my work for my graduate work in Trinidad. So I just made enough of a sketch to be able to key the thing out. Here's a Heiler Rosabergi. I later had a student in my own course on the OSA that worked on that species. I, I started doing my own courses down here because I could never convince the UT Austin to get into OTS. I tried when I first got there. And our first president was a man named Stephen Spur, who was a co-founder of OTS. And I met him on my first day there, and he said, we're going to get us into OTS, and he was never able to do so. So I started running my own courses, and that ended up with me being on the OSA with courses and staying out there. There's a uh, pericopid moths that are mimics of Heliconius butterflies. This one actually was in possession of Jansen. He had driven down from having a course out of Kansas and Mexico, and I have on here collected in Chiapas by Jansen. But they're also in the Osa. And various, here's a uh, uh, little iguanid lizard that 
has no metabolism. That's probably my best little sketch. That's fairly talented there. Um, some of the main groups of fish out there. The interesting thing on the Osa, when you go to the Pacific side, is that the, the normal freshwater predators are basically gone. The cichlids are not there, whereas they're very diverse on the other side. And the niche of the, the niche in the freshwater systems are taken over by marine invaders like snappers. And so um, that's kind of a peninsula effect. There are almost no primary freshwater fish on the Osa. There's one catfish. And so one of my students out there named Kirk Weinmiller actually was interested in that. He ended up working on fish communities and working on the radiation of cichlids in South America versus Central America. And we went to the Cerro. That's too darn cold for me. I didn't like it up there. And that's uh, some of the some of the uh, some of those. And then I there was another course, the advanced course in July of '69, which we applied for, and it was competitive to get in. There was still Jansen Garden Orians and John Vandermeer were the faculty. This was more theoretical. Jan, uh, uh, Vandermeer was giving a lot of theoretical um, di uh, theoretical stuff on demography and community matrices, and so we're down there writing uh, writing out equation matrix equations and all this stuff out in the rainforest. So that juxtaposition between theoreticians and natural historians is something that OTS has. Uh, has uh, fostered, and it's a really important component of this, throwing all these diverse people together and hybridizing the intellectual environment, uh, kind of like the hybridization of species in the field kind of contributes to diversity.